walking away. You can't stand it. Hey everybody, uh, Mike here. So uh, today I want to go over one of my uh, favorite uh, bluing olive patterns uh, from North Carolina. Uh, this is in a size uh, 16. Uh, real simple, uh, just a plain CDC wing, uh, turkey biot body, and a uh, Cote de Leon tail. So let's get to it. Okay, like, so like I said, this is right here is a uh, size 16 dry fly hook. Um, <clears throat> light wire stuff. I'm going to be using this olive green uh, thread and 70. And uh, I already have it spooled up on a Norvice bobbin. Uh, the Norvice bobbin, great little thing. Um, I have it spooled up on here already. Uh, it's an automatic bobbin system, but it has a really really fine tip on it so like I mean here's the tip on my Norvice bobbin and uh, this is the tip that is on you know your normal Renzetti so I'll just give you an idea of how fine this thing is I love it so um, so go ahead and start about a millimeter behind the eye right there and then go and just get a couple turns with these small flies when you're talking like size 16 and under whether it's a dry fly midge anything like that you really got to be careful about your thread wraps you really want to watch how many thread wraps you apply to your flies and that kind of stuff uh, I picked up this right here at Orbis about a couple weeks ago um, let me show you real quick so this is like it's it's bulk CDC uh, three grams, huge box of all kinds of uh, CDC uh, fibers from Orbis. <clears throat> really nice stuff. Uh, I have not had very many bad fiber, I mean bad feathers, uh, to be honest. And so, real, but real quick though, I'm just going to use, uh, get three good size fibers, I mean feathers. And uh, if you have a CDC tool where you can wrap CDC to make it really uh, just use the actual fiber tips instead of the feather tips uh, that'd probably be better uh, I've been meaning to pick one up just haven't found one I like yet to be honest so go ahead and get a couple of those uh, line those tips up and then once you line them up pinch them at the bottom and then go ahead and stroke all those feathers I mean all those fibers forward and then pick out your wing size. Yeah, it's about right. And then go ahead and cinch that down right where you like it. One, two, three, four, five. And you come in here with your fine tip scissors. Snip that off. And don't worry about posting it up yet. Well, we're not we're not really even gonna post it up. I'm just basically gonna fan it out and wrap it with hackle. So you see my you see my barb like right. Let me get my scissors. See my barb like right there. Okay, you want to stop about one turn before the barb. So next one I'm gonna use this is uh, if I can find it. Oh, here they are. Okay, this is a uh, speckled. Code de Leon. Yeah. It's expensive stuff, to be honest. I, can't, I hate buying it. But see what, though? It actually is the, uh, you know, the best tail fiber material that I've ever had. For the stiffness of the tail, it beats uh, micro fibbits out of the water. So uh, get your Code de Leon for the tail. Right here. And go ahead and uh, you want to get about, uh, let's say about mm, half a dozen fibers. And they pinch off real easy. Make sure they're lined up. Okay. Good. Go about the length of the tail and the length of the body. One, two, go up underneath, slide them up, and 
wrap up to where you uh, cut off the wing. on that taper right there real quick and then come on back and go ahead and tighten your thread up cool uh, and then next what you want to do is, is get you some olive turkey bites and uh, don't get the really thick stubby ones down here on the very bottom of the biot I mean as you can see they're, they're real stubby and they're thick now I get these long skinny ones up there at the top on the very tip there you go cool and then look at your buyout real quick and make sure that you're gonna get the uh, if you look at it real quick there's like a rib that sticks up from the turkey buyout and there's kind of like a little translucent side, okay? Make sure you have the rib facing the back of the fly. And then go ahead and give it a couple wraps right at the tip. If you have a chance to put these turkey biots in a little bit of water, not much, just a little bit, and uh, let them soak for a little while, that'll make them a ton stronger. And as a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Just to make sure I don't break this biot. So I've already broken my thread once. Uh, go ahead and I'm just gonna put a whip finish real quick right there. Or a half hitch um, will work too. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let the rotary vise. Okay, get my hackle pliers. Then pinch the biot. And then use the just, just I just, I usually just use the weight of the uh, hackle pliers to keep the tension on the biot, and then just kind of give it a couple of wraps and make sure the the rib on the biot is over covering your last couple of wraps or your last wrap. So like, yeah, there we go. That's looking good. This is the reason for using turkey biots over goose biots because a goose biot is not long enough to really overwrap, overlap itself even through the whole you know length of a size 16 fly. And make sure you really wrap it really good before you try to cut it off. The last thing you would want is for that thing right there to come undone. looks good now you're gonna come in front and you're gonna kind of you're not gonna post the wing but you're gonna put a good little bump of thread right in front of it to lean it back and straight up now if you want to and just for just for the sake of it just to show you what it looks like you can just tie the wings in and then you can separate them just like that that's fine they're gonna lay down a little bit but they're going to look just like that. And then uh, for this right here, I'm going to use the uh, whiting. Whiting. And this is a uh, pro grade um, cape, whole cape. And this is like a cream color. Um, come in here. Make sure you use your hackle gauge. Uh, people don't realize a lot of times that they're, uh, all your capes are different. So you may have a skinny feather but it could be size 20, you know, on other flies it may, or I mean on other capes, that same, you know, thickness of feather may be a size 16 or so. So just be careful with that. Expose the tip. Tie it in, pull back. And I'm just going to tie in part of the stem here as well. And then come forward. And then for the, uh, the thorax of the fly, uh, go ahead and come in here. Where is my whip finish tool? I just, sometimes I just, I just use the whip finish tool to uh, stick down inside the, uh, 
any kind of dubbing dispenser, dispenser and pull out a little bit right there. And then uh, just a little bit of dubbing. It doesn't take much, but you want to put a really thin, fine layer on. Okay, there we go. And then... I can already tear it now. I'm going to have too much on here, so I'm just going to pull some off. And then reapply. Okay. And then the front and then the back. I have the back and the front. There we go. I'm going to leave it right there. And then start with the, with the, uh, the hackle. And it all takes about three turns in front, three turns in the back. And then pull everything back and start to form your head. Go ahead and trim away any loose fibers. You know, I'd be the first one to tell anybody that, you know, uh, tying smaller flies is a whole different ball game than tying bigger flies. And that is my favorite blueing olive pattern, though. That's all it needs. Well, steel wheel rides steel rail, and the rubber wheel rides the road. The ground underneath my boot heels burns right through my soul, right through my weary soul. Wildfire travels on a wayward wind through a field of broken dreams. Your memory flies to my restless heart on falling angels' wings. And I wish I could.